Hi everyone, this is Khaled from uh, GNS3 Talk and in uh, this uh, quick video we will go through the 13th um, ticket for the CCMP T-Shoot exam, uh, exam. Um, I'll be um, I'll be just guiding, guiding you through the uh, the uh, how to solve the problems for these tickets so uh, we'll go ahead and open GNS3 and load the topology for the 13th ticket there's only two tickets left, this one and the next one and um, uh, the common way of uh, dealing with this ticket is really uh, to assume that there's a client one to uh, client uh, to web server connectivity problem um, unless stated otherwise on a ticket please uh, pay so attention to the uh, ticket description when you open it the tickets are uh, usually uh, about Client one having problem connected to the web server. However, there's a few IP vision six problem or a uh, or some other problems like the HSRP uh, being active on DSW one uh, on DSW two and not DSW one. So I'm going to bring up the uh, uh, connection between um, sorry, bringing the consoles, and I'm going to go jump into the client. Uh, in the exam, you'll be provided with a, a, a Windows host machine, so there is no show IP interface brief to check out the IP address allocation of it. Instead, there is an IP config that you need to do on the client. So you need to type IP, IP config, uh, and um, and that's the best way of actually verifying the IP address. And here in this uh, tutorial, obviously, we'll be using a Cisco router, so uh, the interface allocation will be completely uh, different. Um, so you could see that the client, that, that the first thing that I usually do is really just check out the IP address on the on the client, and you could see that there's a, 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 a there's a problem on the um, on um, I the client receiving an IP address. Uh, there's multiple issues that could cause the um, this issue this thing to happen. Well, the uh, client is hanging off ASW1, and uh, the interface on ASW1 is supposed to be part of VLAN 10. And it's supposed to be an access uh, access interface, so we need to verify that this is an access port, and it is actually a VLAN 10 port. We also need to verify that the trunk port between ASW1 and DSW1 and DSW2 are configured with the proper um, configurations, and that they are allowing VLAN 10 to pass through the trunk. We also need to verify that the connect connectivity between DSW1 and Router 4 is is done properly. Why are we actually concerned about this? Well, because the router 4 is the one that assigning the the, the IP addresses. It is the DHCP server. So we need to verify why uh, we need to verify the connection all the way from the client all the way to the DHCP server. I usually start from the uh, access switch in this case. So quickly, I'm gonna go jump into the access switch and have a few. I'll need to check a few things. So show VLAN, uh, this is what you need to do on the exam, however here, because this is a 16 um, Ethernet switch uh, module on a 30, 3660, you have, to do go, you have to use the show VLAN switch. Uh, there's a better command, show VLAN brief, or show v in this case we go show uh, VLAN you know, switch brief, which shows us all the, uh, all the important, you know, it doesn't really show you the rest of the VLANs. Alright, so um, yeah, port five, Ethernet uh, um, fast Ethernet one slash zero is actually the active port, and it is part of VLAN ten. So the access port it seems to be fine. I'm going to go and check out the interfaces uh, on the trunk interfaces, and see whether VLAN ten is actually allowed on the uh, on the trunks. And yes, it looks like that one ten and twenty are allowed. So there is no issues on ASW one. ASW one is really a layer two switch. There's not that much you can do about it. There is, is the VLANs, are VLANs allowed? Yes, they are on the allowed on the trunk. Are they allowed on access? Yes. Is the access port configured to be part of VLAN uh, 10? Yes, it is, and we saw that here. Let me jump into the DSW1 and see what I could see. DSW1 is distribution switch. So uh, enable show, um, show VLAN switch brief. Okay, so there VLAN 10 is active, but there is no port associated with it. This is okay because this is a distribution switch. It's not supposed to have a client port connected to a distribution switch. However, it should have a VLAN 10 active and operating. All right, so it looks like that the VLAN is active. The other thing I need to check is, is there any restriction on the trunk port on the switch? So show interface, trunk. Okay, so allowed VLANs on uh, port channels 4 and 5 
are all allowed really uh, and they are allowed you could see them here 10 uh, 1 10 and 20 all right so it looks like that the can, uh, DSW1 seems to be fine we need to check is there a reachability problem between DSW1 and router 4 so you go ping um, 10.1.4.5 okay all right so I'm gonna I usually ping from different sources IP address in this case so 10.2.1.0 slash 24 this is the subnet which sits between the DSW1 so I'm gonna go ping the same one and I'm gonna go source 10.2.1.1 ah and the reachability seems to be fine as well so router 4 can actually reach this interface can reach the interface behind it but it's not really assigning a client uh, one IP address so VLAN seems to be fine so this is part of VLAN 10 this is a trunk along VLAN 10 let me check the configuration and about the DHCP settings in DSW1 because DSW1 is supposed to be uh, assigning the DHCP allocation into router 4 so I'm gonna go show run we need to go to the interface VLAN which is an SVI really interface VLAN 10 here we go so it's interface VLAN 10 IP address 10.2.1.1 yep that's fine IP helper address 10.1.4.5 and this is really the IP address that I just ping and this is the standby alright uh, is other requests coming into the DSW1 or going to the DSW2 let me just verify the uh, HSRP show standby VLAN 10 priority 150 configured 150 so the state is active so yes DSW1 is the switch which is responsible of forwarding all the DHCP requests because it's actually responding to any ARP request sorry any DHCP discover and ARP request as it uh, it is the one that's providing the virtual uh, virtual um, uh, default gateway for the client okay uh, I'm probably going to I need to go jump into the R4 in this case because everything within the DSW1 seems to be configured correctly I need to check really the whether I could ping this interface I will just try it from DSW1 but I'm gonna try from here so I'm gonna go ping 10.2.1.1 okay I'm gonna see if I could ping DSW2 which is dot two it's not responding okay so uh, I, I shouldn't have tried to ping it but 10.1.4.8.10 uh, okay so DSW2 seems to be fine I'm, I'm not really concerned about DSW2 but I need to verify why isn't the DSW2 is the responding show IP interface brief yep show okay uh, the reason is I think it's because VLAN okay this is not really related to this ticket but this could be more related to the um, to the configuration of this particular switch instead which looks like it has been missed out okay so it looks like that the line protocol is up but the VLAN is down uh, let me just go show VLAN switch brief uh, they're not even there alright so I'm gonna uh, uh, just ignore this VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 exit okay so the VLANs have come up okay so config the interface VLAN 10 no shot no shot there you go All right. please ignore whatever I just did before <laughs> I'm gonna save it but uh, you, you, you probably won't even come across this so say project 
All right. So now, um, if I go to router four, look, on uh, the uh, router four shouldn't have any problem to even reaching. Uh, um, yep. Uh, reach reaching DSW two. Okay, so the DSW1 and DSW2 are both up. Uh, they're both reaching, they can reach the route of 4. Uh, I need to check up the DHCP uh, allocation. That's the only thing I could check at the moment. So, because route of 4 can reach this, can reach this, can reach behind this, uh, uh, these uh, layer 3 switches. So, it, all I need to go is check out the show run and check out the DHCP settings. We did all the things that we could do. We checked the access link, access port it's fine. We check the trunk port and it's fine. We check the distribution switch trunk port, it's fine. We check the IP help address configuration on the DSW1 and it is fine. We've checked reachability between RATA4 and DSW1 and it is fine. Um, only thing I haven't checked, one more thing which is really just the EIGRP. But given that RATA4 knows about this network behind it, I believe that it shouldn't be a problem either. So show IP E I uh, show IP route E I G I P. So we are even learning about it. So show IP route. So we are even having a default gateway. So there is no problem even with the E I G I P. Um, all I could think of there is a DHCP problem then. Uh, okay. So IP no IP domain lookup no IP DHCP VRF. Yep, that's fine. Okay. So it says I'm just gonna pause the video. Someone at the door. Okay, so IP DHCP excluded address is 10.2.1.254. Okay, so basically th we are creating a DHCP pool, and the DHCP pool is actually excluding 10.2.1.254, which is really the uh, default gateway uh, address for the client. So yes, that's fine. How do I know it's actually the default gateway for the client? Is I think it's it, it is written here somewhere. Uh, the default gateway? No, it's not. But if I go to DSW1, it should be the IP address for the HSRP group. Um, ah, I'll go to DSW1. So show standby VLAN 10. And virtual IP address 10.2.1.254. Okay. So this is correct. However, I think there's a problem here. It says IP DHCP excluded address 10.2.1.1 all the way to 10.2.1.253 which means that even though we have a DHCP server in router 4 it's actually excluding assigning IP addresses for the range from 10.2.1.1 through 10.2.1.53 so it's not really assigning any IP addresses to any of the clients so this is the exclude statement however the DHCP pool is actually here the DHCP pool is called clients and they name it so that it actually assigns really uh, IP addresses into the clients of our network the network that these uh, clients will be part of is 10.2.1.0 24 and the default router is supposed to be 10.2.1.1 so I could see that there is another problem with this one either as well the default router is really the IP address of DSW1 so what happens if DSW1 goes down DSW2 will take over um, this is in theory that's how it's supposed to be doing however if DSW1 goes down and if DSW2 takes over I mean, this was a H uh, this is obviously a HSIP related thing. Then, if a cl uh, one of the clients wants to boot up and ask for a DSCB discovery through DSW2, it, it won't accept it because DSW2 has a different IP address to this one. So there are two things that we need to configure. I believe again this is a bug, which I'm quite happy that I actually figured out that there is one. And the other thing is this one, which is a disaster, really. I mean, come on. I mean, you you you, uh, you have a DHCP server, and you're excluding all the IP addresses from one all the way to 253. So, I need to configure. Uh, well, I need to fix this not so critical fault first. So I'm gonna go config t um, IP DHCP pool DHCP pool clients default 
router 10.2.1.1 and I think there's a secondary one router's name IP address so 10.2.1.2 which is really the IP address of DSW2 okay so I'd like you to try these things out as well I'm not gonna fix this topology I'm not gonna fix the configurations either alright so let me have a look at the configurations default yep so it looks like the IP address has been added now I'm going to fix this temporarily just on the run I'm actually going to disable the whole thing oh you know what I'm not gonna disable the whole thing I'm gonna exclude 10.2.1.1 because we know it's actually the SW1's IP address and it's statically configured and I'm gonna include uh, DSW2 as well so I'm gonna go config T IP DHCP uh, I'm gonna remove this one first no and I'm gonna go DHCP excluded address 10.2.1.1 through 10.2.1.2 Two. Okay, I just received a message saying that conflict DHCP address conflict server pinged 10.2.1.1 try that too. So what's happening? I believe that may uh, the uh, client one has been assigned an IP address of the uh, of DSW2. I believe. Let me check it. That's why the exclude IP DHCP clue is very important. Show IP interface uh, brief. 10.2, no, not really. Everything seems to be fine. Um, so we fixed the problem now. So I'm gonna ping 10, uh, 209 65 200 241. Okay. Okay, so uh, I was at router 4 and I'm not too sure what sort of. Um, uh, error message says server pinged 10.2.1.1 makes no sense ping conflict I'll just leave it as it is uh, uh, I hope while well, this uh, this tutorial has been clear it's very straightforward uh, anyone familiar with the DHCP I think this uh, would have been a joke anyway I hope uh, this video has been informative and I'd like to thank you for uh, uh, watching